When we've computed the homology of Sears, we learned how to combine the long exact sequence of pairs and the relative homologies with the excision axiom to compute the homology, the absolute homology of a space. But that might have appeared a bit unnatural to use relative homologies to compute the absolute homology of a space. Now we're learning a tool called the Maya Viatori sequence that allows you to compute the absolute homology of a space from the absolute homologies of simpler pieces. And before we state the Maya Viatori sequence, I want to introduce a slightly technical definition the definition of an excisive triad. So we're given a space x and subspaces x1, x2 in x. We call the triple of these spaces an excisive and excisive triad if the inclusion of x1, x1 uh, intersected x2 into x, x2 induces isomorphisms in homology in all degrees. Maybe the most important instance of this is when x1 and x2 are open subsets of x and their union is all of x. Because then the, tr the triple x, x1, x2 is excisive by the excision axiom. And you see that by applying the excision axiom in the following situation. So remember we had, uh, in our way we formulated it, we had um, A subspace in B subspace in x. So just applied for A being x minus x1 and B x2 and then A is closed if both are open B is open and A lies in B so the topological assumption in the excision axiom is satisfied and then we had the statement that the homology um, of x minus A comma B minus A is the same as the homology of x comma B and you see that this x1 intersected x2, that's exactly the b minus a. Um, so this is a direct consequence of the excision axiom, and it's the most Im important instance of this. And now we can formulate the Maya Vietoris sequence using this notion. Maybe before we do so, can you leave yeah, the sure. definition for a little while? Um, the definition as it stands does not seem to be symmetric in x1 and x2, but it actually turns out to be symmetric. So if x semicolon x1 comma x2 is excisive, then so is x semicolon x2 comma x1. But if I remember right, that's not quite easy. So that's actually well, another task in diagram chasing. So yes, I uh, didn't want to do that now. But it's still good to know, even if we don't do it, it's good to know that this definition is actually symmetric in those two subspaces. Yeah, that's a good point. So I said the Maya Vittori sequence allows you to compute absolute homologies from absolute homologies of simpler pieces, but there is actually also a relative version, and I right away state the most general form, which is the relative version, but the most important case of this uh, theorem will be um, the case where the subspace A that's appearing in a second is empty. So what do we have? We have an excise of triad to start with. And then we have a subspace A in X0, which I define to be the intersection of X1 and X2. So A is just a subspace, no further conditions on A. And then there is a long exact sequence called the Maya Vittori sequence, or MV sequence for short. And in the Maya Vittori sequence, it will be important to um, carefully define the maps. So let me first write down the terms.
then here is a boundary operator to Hn x0a, which we have to construct. And, um, okay, I want to write down the next term. So let's break the line here. Hn x1. and so on and so forth. So that's Maya Vitoris. What are the maps here? So we have two kinds of maps. Um, we have here something that I call I1 induced by I1 and I2. And I1 and I2 are the inclusions of x0 into x1 and of x2 uh, sorry, x0 into x2, and we take the sum of those. And here it's j1 star minus j2 star. And again, here j1 and j2 are the respective inclusions of x1 and x2 into x. But we take the difference, and here we take um, the sum of those. And the boundary operator is something to be constructed, that we have to construct. So to, to prove this and to construct the boundary operator, we start with triple sequences. So here is a commutative letter whose rows are triple sequences. The first one is the triple A, X0, X1. So this is the boundary operator of the triple sequence and uh, it's understood that all the errors that are not uh, labeled are coming from the inclusions. And on the bottom we have the triple sequence of AX2X. and x to a. All right, and we have more inclusions in this picture. We have this map induced by the inclusion, this map, and the same here. The condition of the triad x1, x0, and x to be excisive is exactly this isomorphism here. And what we have to define now is this boundary homomorphism from Hn plus 1, x comma a. So starting from here to Hn x0 comma a. And what we do is we go like that, use the iso to go up, and then go here. So that's our definition of the boundary of operator of the Maya Vitori sequence. Now we have to show that this is really an exact sequence and we won't uh, show this in completeness. We only show exactness at a certain point and uh, a certain location. What we do show is the exactness right here. So something is mapped to, well, first of all, this composition is zero, and then if something is mapped to zero, it actually comes from uh, the image of this difference of homomorphisms. So let's first check that this composition here is really zero, and there's more true. Actually, each of the individual compositions is zero. So if you 
uh, combine the map induced by J1 uh, with the boundary homomorphism, then it's zero and the same for J2. Where do we have uh, J1 in the picture below? We have it here. No, I have to check. Where do we have it? Here we have it. All right, so let's see. We start here, we go down here, we follow our definition of the boundary operator. Since the whole thing commutes, this composition is the same as going like that. Two steps, and this is two, two arrows, successive arrows in a long exact sequence, so this is zero. So we've shown that J1 star followed by this boundary operator is zero. The same for J2 star. J2 star is here. And the same here. So if you follow this and then here, then what we have in particular are two successive arrows in the long exact uh, sequence uh, below, and therefore this is zero. Okay. In particular, the difference of these two homomorphisms followed by the boundary operator is zero. To show exactness, so to show that also the kernel is included in the image, we now really need to consider this difference. So let's start with an element that is mapped to zero. We start with, um, maybe call that element. I worked with dots and colored dots. Let's work for now with uh, actual <laughs> elements, an element x, and this is mapped to zero under this boundary homomorphism. What can we say? Well, we can look at the element, uh, let's call it x1. Maybe a bit more systematic if I draw it like that. Let's erase the zero again. Okay. So x is mapped to zero under the boundary homomorphism. Uh, x1 is the element that we get uh, on the way to it. And the upper sequence is exact. Therefore, there is an element x2 that is mapped to x1. We can map x2 down to hn plus 1x comma a, as we've seen many times. Uh, there's no guarantee that x2 is mapped to x, and we don't expect it. Uh, what we do have, if we map x1 down there, well, we do have that we get an element that's mapped to the same element here as x by the commutativity of the whole thing here. So let's call that x3, this element. move this up a little bit. Uh, this x3 is mapped to the same element in hn plus 1 x comma x2 as x. Therefore, if we look at the difference of these two elements, x minus x3, this is mapped to 0. And therefore, by the exactness, exactness of the lower row, this comes from an element it's called x4 in hn plus 1 x2 comma a. Right. So therefore, um, you see that x minus x3 just to summarize what we have here, so x minus x3 is the same as J2 star of x4, it's the image. On the other hand, this x minus x3 can be rewritten as x minus J1 star of x2, because x3 was this image of, um, x3 was the image of x2 under this map. And therefore, we have written x as the image of an element um, in 
this difference, let's see what we wanted to prove. We wanted to prove that the element x, which is here, is in the image of this map, and this is exactly what we have achieved. It is the image of the element uh, x2, comma x4. So this is um, the image of this map. The exactness at the other locations is similar, and this proves my aviatory sequence. Let me emphasize what I said in the beginning, that the most important situation where we apply this is where A is the empty set, and therefore we have just absolute homologies in this long exact sequence, and especially in the case where x1 and x2 are open subsets whose union is x, you see how we can compute now the absolute homology of x from the absolute homologies of x1 and x2, so the potentially simple pieces.